JJ Bartlett. I'm the president of Fishing Partnership Support Services. We're a nonprofit company dedicated to providing uh, services that support the health and well being of fishing families. And one of the most important things that we do is offer free survival uh, and safety training to uh, fishermen. And uh... My name is Ed Dennehy. I am the Director of Safety Training for Fishing Partnership Support Services uh, out of New Bedford. And we run a commercial fisherman safety and survival training program that uh, targets all of the fishermen, primarily in Massachusetts, but uh, throughout New England. And we've been uh, providing this training since 2005. Uh, we originally got a federal grant to put the training together and we collaborated with a variety of organizations, including the Coast Guard, uh, the School for Marine Science and Technology at UMass Dartmouth, which is where we are today conducting the training, and uh, the Harbor Development Commission here in New Bedford Harbor, uh, the city of New Bedford, uh, several different uh, commercial fishing uh, safety training organizations, and uh, we all got together and decided that what we needed was a program that was hands-on and that targeted all of the fishermen, not just the captains, but uh, all the crews also. Uh, since 2005, we've trained over 1,500 fishermen. Uh, the grant money ran out a long time ago, so we, uh, we were able only to hold a couple of trainings a year uh, since Fishing Partnership got involved, which is uh, in 2012, we we're able to uh, expand this training program throughout the state and so we hold it now in New Bedford, uh, in uh, Chatham, in Gloucester, uh, in Sandwich, uh, in uh, Marshfield, and uh, hopefully to do, we're going to try to do one in Boston and do one uh, either on Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard this year. So uh, we're taking the training to where the fishermen are. We've had great feedback from the fishermen. They, they really learn a lot here. They enjoy it because it's hands-on. It's not lectures. Uh, it's getting in there and, and putting on the survival suits and jumping in the water. Step off. Come up with your arms out. Keep it right up on your back. Good. Okay. Good. 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 Just like that. All four of you together. Floating. Think around with the hose a bit. So that's where you're going to count everybody else. Okay. Okay. putting out fires with uh, fire extinguishers. A fire based in land uh, versus a sea-based fire or a fire on a vessel is very, very different. Uh, you know, if, for example, if there was a fire here today in the building, we would all walk outside, we'd go to the corner of the parking lot, we'd take out our cell phones and take pictures when the fire truck comes. That's not an option when you're at sea. Okay. Good. Thing good. Good. Back away. See how he cobbed his way right in. Beautiful. Okay, don't be afraid. Out, out, out. Okay, can't be. You take up in your position. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's good. You know, that could be a typical situation. Yeah, damage control. Uh, fixing leaks, uh, knowing how to operate the emergency pumps that the Coast Guard brings to them. So the first thing when you open up is going to be a flashlight and directions that's in seven different languages. Um, so follow the directions, there's pictures and written directions on how to, how to operate it. And it's really, it's made, it's made down to the simplest level, that things are color coded, on which things are connected where, where the gasoline is connected, but you have to assemble it when it comes out of the can, it's not ready to go. So follow the directions and uh, let us know if your vessel's taken on water because we'll bring more than one pump with us um, to pump twice as much water. So definitely get that call out and say, hey, my, there's a big difference in what we bring, whether your vessel's on fire or whether your vessel's taken on water. So. Get it all wet. Get it all wet for them. I'm sure they'll love it. We teach them about life rafts and the, and how to use uh, all the equipment. So, in. we get to the raft. 
we've got it up right. You can see, here's the key anchor that's going to be automatically deployed. Another thing that's going to happen on the top of here, and this one's broken off from so much training, there's going to be a light. It's just a slow flashing light. There's a steady light on the inside. We show them with the different types of flares and we allow them to actually shoot them off, which most of them have never done before. Uh, we talk about man overboard. There's three functions to a man overboard. There's a function that's performed in a wheelhouse. There's a perfun uh, function that's performed on deck. And there's actually a function for the person that goes overboard. Okay. These lights make you visible at night. Any, any bright colors. Most fishermen wear dark colors. He's got a bright color. Red is... Eh. But dark colors do not help, especially at night. We talk about the procedures that the Coast Guard uses when they have to hoist somebody with a helicopter. Uh, my name is Butch Agden, I'm a retired firefighter from just on the street here about 20 minutes. You don't necessarily have to have heavy, excruciating pain, sweating, you may have difficulty breathing, you could feel nauseous, you could be vomiting. Begin CPR. So, For help with CPR, let's say I'm not that confident in my CPR. Blue I could use some help. So I just push the button. He's going he's to tell me what to do. So I just push Place the button. the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. Okay? That's going to go on for two minutes. After two minutes, it's going to reanalyze and it's going to tell you what to do. See, the rules of defibrillation right now are one shot, immediately followed by two minutes of CPR. And you just keep pressing like this. You do this until you see signs of life or the help shows up. If you do the person, you want to get two press like I showed you how to do. Um, we talk about emergency communications. Anybody injured? No injuries. Oh, yes, he did. He got burned. Where? Tell them. Tell them what kind of burn. So they know what equipment. They know how to deal with it when they get on scene. And what else goes with it? What are the Coast Guard going to ask you what you're doing? What are you doing? Are you putting on your... Exactly. They will hammer you with that. They won't let you get away from that horn. So, I've got this number of people, injuries and no injuries, and last, <clears throat> we're donning our survival suits. Uh, all of these are done in, uh, in modules. We rotate people through them. It's a one-day program. Um, again, uh, today we're here in New Bedford at the SMAS facility, and we've got 46 fishermen on a very cold February day that have come out for the training. Um, so we... Also, as part of uh, Fishing Partnerships um, program, we provide some other free services to fishermen and their families, uh, inoculations for tetanus and pneumonia and, and uh, the flu shots, uh, free dental screenings, uh, and an employee assistance program, all for the fishermen and their families at no, no cost to them. So this has been a great program. Uh, we hope to be able to continue this into the future. We hope to be able to expand it throughout New England. Um, and again, it's very important. Fishing remains the most dangerous occupation in the country. And every year uh, we lose uh, fishermen because of accidents out at sea. So our program hopefully addresses some of those. It also teaches people how to avoid 
getting into emergency situations in the first place. So we very much appreciate the collaboration of all of our, our partners in this program. And again, we hope to continue this uh, into the future. Thank you.